Maria, thanks very much for talking to us. You're in charge of research for ABB's Smart Cities Solutions and Technologies. A lot of people have probably heard this term Smart Cities. What exactly is a Smart City? I could probably share my vision on the Smart City and, um, and vision that we uh, in ABB also are projecting on uh, our customers and, and people. Uh, to me, the cornerstone is people and their needs today and in the future. So it's, it's about um, more comfort, it's about safety, it's about security, it's about uh, well-being, it's about the quality of life. Uh, but it's also about the businesses and prosperity of the businesses because that's, uh, what, where, that's where the creativity and enjoyment, uh, fulfillment from the work comes for, to people as well. And this is also about the uh, environment and the ability to preserve uh, sustainable environment, sustainable city where, where we live. It's about the green space, it's about uh, relaxation points, it, it's uh, the whole ecosystem uh, that city provides. That's quite interesting because I think a lot of people, they think of smart cities and they think automatically of technology. But what you're saying is actually it all comes back to people who live there. I take technology. Uh, I enjoy technology. I love technology. I chose technology as my profession, but I see technology as uh, something that we provide to address the, uh, the, the, the core needs uh, to bring the value. It's a mean, it's not the objective. Um, I enjoy parts... Uh, parts of the solutions that don't engage necessarily technology or engage the old parts of the technology. So if uh, uh, the grocery's delivery from the farm uh, that is coming into the local district is using old bell just to signal that it's there and doesn't use the digital app, I think it uh, adds the authenticity, it adds the ambience, it adds the good feeling. A lot of people, I suppose, associate smart cities with these huge modern uh, metropolises in Asia. Can a, an old historic city, a European city, also be smart? Uh, I, I think so. I mean, I'm convinced about that. I do believe that a city like Zurich, for example, is a very smart city. It provides a clean environment. Uh, the transportation system, if you look at it, is uh, low emission, so it's uh, to a large extent electrified. Uh, the uh, infrastructures and utilities are very uh, modern and uh, very efficient. Uh, the services that the city is providing uh, are also very comfortable, so you can uh, reach a lot of the information. You are not spending a lot of effort in uh, trying to communicate with the city administration. So I think there are many, many elements where uh, really city made a lot of uh, effort and has transformed into the modern city. The buildings, I think it's a, a very a very important component of the cities as well. So we spend a lot of time, we used to spend a lot of time in the buildings. I think we are tending to outdoors now. Uh, and the uh, uh, energy efficiency of the building, uh, this is clearly in the focus point also of the considerations, how to preserve the sustainable environment, how to reduce the carbon footprint. And, and, and similar activities, but also how to enhance the comfort of, uh, of people. As cities work towards being more energy efficient, developing uh, electric transport systems and so on, what role do companies like ABB play and what role does government and legislation play? I see governments are essential and I see generally that uh, creating a smart city or maybe even further uh, leaving smart city uh, because this is, again, it's not destination. Uh, new factors appear, changing environment, economic or, or climate, um, changing priorities. Uh, it, it all is evolving. So we are, not, uh, we are not in the end when we have created the smart city. We will continuously enhance it, continuously advance it. Uh, and the role of the governments, uh, the role of the architects, the role of the designers, city planners, uh, utilities, uh, responsibility of the technology vendors like ABB uh, is actually to collaborate in the most efficient best way and I think it's all possible through the shared knowledge experience collaboration government would set the priorities would define what is the uh, vision what is the objective uh, what is the uh, uh, path let's say and then it's task of uh, all other stakeholders to make it happen and also people because it's also a responsibility of each and single one of us to 
uh, to understand uh, the role of sustainability, to preserve the environment, to, to contribute in the way we can. Now, ABB, of course, uh, has a very broad portfolio covering a lot of different industries. What kind of position does that put us in, in terms of responding to these needs? In ABB, we are able to contribute quite significantly, I believe, to the uh, uh, sustainable, clean environment of the city. So, uh, first of all, we are technology leaders in the uh, EV charging infrastructure. Uh, electrifying not only the personal cars uh, but also of course the transportation like uh, uh, rail, light rail, uh, buses. Um, it, it, it was very significant contribution of advancing and setting the vision for the electric mobility and this is one of the priorities the transport is a very significant contributor to uh, to the emissions and especially in the dense areas like cities of course this is a very uh, significant um, factor of the quality of the life. Uh, besides, uh, we are uh, serving the customers in the utility space for water and for the energy. Uh, so providing efficient, flexible, robust and reliable infrastructure, resilient infrastructure for water, for power. Uh, this is of course uh, maybe hidden from, uh, from the sight of the public, but it's, uh, it's a very important factor. And uh, the uh, utilities need to face also the challenge, increasing challenges in, in terms of the efficiency, in terms of the cost, performance, uh, but also addressing, let's say, difficulties in able to maintain aging infrastructures in the densely populated areas in historical areas like cities. You talked about looking ahead there. I mean, when we look five, ten years into the future, how important do you think these technologies are going to be? Because uh, the world is getting much more urban, population is growing. So how important does it become uh, for cities to adopt these developments? I think we are facing nowadays really unprecedented growth, growth of the population and, and growth of the urban areas. Uh, the um, attention that we are paying to the questions of sustainability, the questions of how to do more with less, how to try to uh, not to disturb existing systems, but to build up on top of that and to build up in the uh, better way. Um, that is certainly in our attention and that will play a role in how many resources do we use to address the growth of the population. How, um, how effectively we are able to implement and to benefit from the new technologies that are appearing there. Um, it's a it's, it's very important factor. Technology is important. Technology is not something that um, should drive the action. Uh, but our action should be taken with the, uh, in the sight of the available technologies to, to be able to deploy them in the best way when you when you think of the future now when you think of cities in 2030 or even 2050 are you optimistic about the future i'm optimistic in our future in 2030 particularly in 2050 i think uh many things might change uh the uh, I, I like to to think of it, it every day is similar but when you look by, back uh, everything is changing so what is happening in 2050, I think it's very difficult to predict. Uh, I'm sure the core values of humanity will stay the same. Uh, the way we are living them, uh, the way we are employing uh, technology or the, the way we are um, benefiting from some advancements, uh, that might change in the way that is difficult to predict today. Maria, thank you very much for spending time and talking to us today. Thank you.